In this video, we're going to start solving oblique triangles, and an oblique triangle is any triangle that does not have a right angle. We're going to focus on two methods. We're going to use the law of sines and the law of cosines to solve these triangles. So you need to keep in mind here, because we're not dealing with right triangles, we have no Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is true for a 90 degree angle or for a right triangle only, so I should not see any solutions that have Pythagorean theorem for these. To solve any triangle, we need to know three parts. One of the parts has to be a side, so we're going to give you a side, at least one, and two other pieces, and then you have to solve the triangle, so that means find the other three pieces. So the law of sines is first, and the law of sines, we're not going to prove it, I'm just going to give it to you, and it states that if you take an angle and a side pair, so sine of angle A and side A, and you take the ratio of those, so you divide them, then it has to be the same as the ratio of B over sine B or C over sine C. And you can actually write that the other way as well as the ratio of sine A over A is equal to sine B over B, etc. Doesn't matter which way, if you reciprocate them all, that's fine too. That's something that can be proved, but we're just going to give it to you and you can accept that it's true at this point. Anytime that we have a side and the angle opposite, then the law of sines is usually what we'll start with. Again, in order to use the law of sines, you must have an angle and the side opposite the angle. So it only works if you have a side and an angle pair. If you don't have that situation, law of sines is not going to help. If law of sines is not going to help, then we can move to law of cosines. And the law of cosines is used if we have two sides and the included angle. So for the diagram below, that would be if we gave you side B and side A and angle C. We don't have a pair like we need for the law of sines, so we're going to use the law of cosines. The other time we use law of cosines is if you know all three sides. And obviously we don't have a pair then because we don't know any angles. So in these two cases, you have to use the law of cosines first. And generally, then we'll use the law of sines after. So that's are two different laws we're going to use. The law of cosines looks like this, and sometimes we can call it a general Pythagorean theorem, or Pythagorean theorem for non-right angle triangles, because you notice it looks a lot like Pythagorean theorem. We have a squared equals b squared plus c squared, but then we have this term that we must subtract, and that's 2 times b times c, so the same two legs as we have here, or same two sides as we have here, multiplied by the cosine of A, or that's A would be the included angle of B and C. So what I mean by included angle, if we look back at our triangle, A is the included angle between sides B and sides C. So in our formula, where angle A has to be included between B and C, or A comes with the corresponding side over here. We can actually rewrite the law of sines for any of the angles, or any of the sides, we can say that b squared has to be a squared plus c squared minus 2 times ac multiplied by the cosine of the angle between a and c, well that's angle b, or the one that corresponds to b. And also we can say c squared has to be a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cosine of c. So we can write the cosine law three times for each triangle. We can also rearrange the formula and solve for the cosine, which means we'll actually be able to solve for the angle if necessary, which is what we'll have to do if we're given three sides. So we're going to go ahead now and start solving some questions, and in this example I'm just going to solve the first one. And in the first example here it says we know two angles and one side. So anytime you know two angles, we're actually going to use the law of sines first. So every time you get a question, the first thing you're going to do is draw it. So make sure it's not a right triangle. Because it's not a right triangle, we actually don't care how it's labeled. This time A, B, and C can go wherever we want. It's only a sketch, so it doesn't have to be the scale or anything. We just have to make sure we put the right pieces. So this is 60 degrees, this one's 40 degrees, and this one is 6.00. If we want to find now side B 
side A and angle C. The first thing we're going to do is find angle C because that's just the sum of all the angles is 180. So 180 degrees minus 40 degrees minus 60 degrees is going to give us 80 degrees for angle C. Now once we know angle C, we have a pair. We have C and angle C. So once we get a pair, now we can say, well, the sine of angle C or just sine of C over C is equal to the sine of B over B. And that will let us find side B. So if we rearrange that equation for B by cross multiplying and then dividing, we end up with C times the sine of B over the sine of C is equal to B. And if we put in the values then, that's going to be 6.00 times the sine of 40, 0 0.0 degrees, divided by the sine of 80 degrees. And put it on your calculator, you get 3.92 for side B. Finally, we need to find side A. And to do that, we're going to start with sine of angle C or sine of C over C. But now for A, we need sine of A over A. Again, we cross multiply and solve for A. We get C sine A over sine C. Plug in the values we know. We get 6.00 times the sine of 60 divided by the sine of 80. And that gives us 5.28 for side A. So to check to see if the answer makes sense, we're going to write down the answers we got up here. So that was 5.8, this is 80, and this is 3.92. So if we look at then our measurements, our smallest angle is B, our smallest side is B, so that makes sense. Our smallest has to be across from our shortest. Our largest angle is 80, our longest side is 6, so that's C and C. So largest is opposite the longest. So our answer makes sense. So we'll stop that question. So we'll stop this question and the video here. I suggest you move to example 2 and you do some practice. Even move ahead the next few pages and try the rest and then come back to the videos and make sure you're getting them right. So that's it for now. Make sure you get some help if you're not understanding and we'll see you in the next lesson.